Okay. Valentine's Day. You made it. We made it. Valentine's Day is every day. Um, and so that's why I'm having my husband, my partner, my confidant on the podcast again, the first recurring guest, um, to talk about some of the stuff that we do in our relationship to keep our relationship strong, to use disagreements as fuel for growth, to keep the contrast and the romance alive. We're bringing it to everyone at Powerful Stuff so you can supercharge your relationships too. Yeah, I think it's really powerful, the habits and systems we built up to make sure that we keep us like fresh and new and sexy, but also <laughs> growing at the same time. Fresh. And I think that we've really been able to, like I'm, I'm such a systems thinker and I, I really appreciate how we've been able to just sink into such an easy like flow into doing it. And it doesn't even feel like work anymore just because it's so much part of our cadence. It's part of our, it's part of our habits, like brushing our teeth. It's just us. It's just us. Um, so it is funny that, uh, yeah, speaking of brushing our teeth, one of the things that we say, and then we'll get into our three breaths and go into the whole episode, but one of the things we say that I think is one of the most powerful things, which we um, learned this terminology from a relationship coach, Leanne, in Canada that you knew, is called flossing, um, where it's this idea of like flossing your teeth. Um, so she says like, don't let things go unsaid, but you can say it in a gentle way, like not, you know, when you feel like you have to bring something up to your partner, making it such a big thing or so much buildup, but rather being like, hey, babe, like I have a little floss. And with that, the intention of the floss is I know this is cleaning it out for the both of us. Yeah, it really adds some levity to it. It's not this big thing. It's not a problem. It's not like an issue that you're raising. It's just, hey, can I have a floss? And it addresses it, it puts a name on it, but it just makes it easy to bring up. And um, yeah, it's cleaning. It's cleaning. Yeah. And so sometimes I'll be like, hey, can I have a floss? And he'll be like, yeah. Cause, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, I'll be like, um, I wanted you to get refried beans, but the ones that you got <laughs> have lard in them and I'm a vegan. <laughs> um, you know, it's like not so serious, but like also like I'd like the vegan refried beans. Um, okay, guys. So we'll kick this off with our three breaths as always to center in together. And then Spencer and I will just dive right in fast and furious to some of the tips and tricks that we use to keep our relationship growing. So closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in, breathing in the love in your heart that you have for the relationships in your life, and exhaling them out, letting them be what they are right now. Second breath in, breathing in the potential, the possibility to deepen these relationships with yourself and with your loved ones. And exhaling that out, feeling the possibility, the space start to open. And then third breath in, breathing in the alchemy of this episode, what Spencer and I say, what you end up hearing. And exhale, releasing that, trusting that is exactly as it's meant to be. So if you guys are just tuning in and didn't hear our part one about our incredible love story, that is my favorite love story of all time, Spencer was motorcycling from Canada to Ushuaia, Argentina on his motorcycle and crashed his bike in LA. He met me, TLDR, he met me. We fell in love. We weren't sure if we were going to give this thing a shot uh, because he wanted to be single on his trip and I didn't want to be in a relationship with someone who was having their cake and eating it too along the road. But through curious conversations and mutual respect, we made it work. We committed to each other. We said, I choose you. At the end of Spencer's trip, I was on the back of his motorcycle when he reached Ushuaia, Argentina. Then he shipped his bike to the United States, drove it across the country on I-10 all the way from Florida to California, moved in with me. We got engaged a year and a half into dating and had four four weddings this year. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think the, the big theme of why we ended up working out was because we both trusted in the now instead of trying to have it all figured out. Yeah, no, that's a good point of like every step of the way, you know, when you meet someone and instantly your head is like, is this husband material or is this wife material or how could it ever work because he's on the road and I'm here. It's like we kind of checked in of like, do I feel respected today? Am I learning today? And um, are we growing together? Mm -hmm. And if all of those were answered yes, then like, let's proceed and then we can check in tomorrow rather than like 
the when then game of like what's going to happen when he goes on the road and I'm here. Yeah. I and mean, I think we both see like some of our single friends sometimes and we see them going through the thought process of like, Oh, this doesn't make sense right now. Or, Oh, this and that. And it just, uh, I think we both just like, okay, learn that lesson already. Like that's not, that's not how to evaluate these things. So I'm glad we got there. I'm glad we got there too. Cause I think that if I had done that with you, I would have probably given you an ultimatum that would have scared you. Cause you were so set on like not feeling like your freedom was being compromised on your trip and I think because I was presenting like, hey, this is what feels good for me. This is what I need to feel safe and free. It, like, how do you feel about that? And I actually gave space for you to answer that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that space was really, like, appreciated by me. And, I, like, I recognized the way that you approached that was so um, tactful and, and so honest at the same time. So, yeah, I think we made a lot of the right decisions. And that's what's got us here. And I think everybody wants to know how we stay our best. How we stay our best ever. Well, yeah, and I was going to say one of the things that we started doing while you were on the road mm -hmm. um, was having weekly date nights. So yep. two things, especially if you're in an, a long-distance relationship or if you're starting out long distance, it's like we always knew when we were going to speak to each other each week mm -hmm. uh, because then it took the wonder out of like, oh my gosh, am I going to call him this week? Or if I didn't hear from you that much, like over the course of the week, I know like Wednesday is date night. And we would both carve out our, our Zoom schedule for that. And we'd, uh, this is, yeah, context, we were separate, like physically, geographically, but we still had it in our calendar one night a week, we'd always call together. And we kept that even when we moved in and were in the same location. Um, anybody listening, the first most actionable thing, if you take anything away from this podcast is do a weekly date night. It's not every month. It's not every day. A week is a great cadence for it. Put it in the calendar, respect it. And what we do with it is each person, we, we, um, alternate, alternate planning it. So one person plans it, the one person one. pays for it. And, uh, the other one just has it booked off. Oh, where are we going? Yeah, okay, you get to be in, in total car. like receiving mode and entering into the other person's world. So it's like, oh, if my boyfriend doesn't like this or uh or or he's never been exposed to that, it's like then that, that your date night is your opportunity to like invite them into your world. And have fun with it. And have fun with it. And so we did that in our long distance thing. And the last thing I was gonna say about long distance stuff too is we always knew when we were gonna see each other next. Mm -hmm. So we never whenever I did meet up with you out and then we can circle back to date night. But whenever we did meet up like if I was with you in Tulum, it's like I knew, okay, I'd meet you when you were motorcycling in Colombia. And so we always knew that next date. So there was never that anxiety, especially if you're a recovering anxious attachment person like me, of like, when am I going to see this person again? Yeah, exactly. And that, having that confusion, like having that question not be in our mind of like, when's it going to be next? Or what does this even look like? Um, really added a lot of clarity to it. Like I remember we'd be... Um, I'd always have like a checkpoint to go and find you. Like I didn't have anything planned on the trip except for like, I'm meeting Meredith in Colombia on December 4th. And I'm like, I got to get to Colombia. So there was kind of almost like the only real structured part of my journey was going to you every, every the couple road of to months. Meredith. Yeah. I used to call it the road to Mare. And yeah. And I felt that, that those like letting, allowing the freedom to ex exist within those parameters, uh, both in like uh, you know, like the literal physical location stuff of knowing um, gave us like such space for like freedom and being relaxed with each other because it removed like it, it removed the guesswork while still allowing it to unfold into what it was. And kind of going back to the date nights too, like three questions or maybe it's four that we always ask each other each date night also creates a safety each week to air out things so they don't like pile up because in past relationships, also as a yeah, recovering anxious attachment, people, uh, people pleaser, I would be like, oh, I don't want to say this because I already said this thing last week, so I don't want to rock the boat. And then p things would pile up and I'd start making assumptions or whatever. Are you going to yawn? No. I can <laughs> see when you're trying to swallow your yawn. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so we ask, what did I do last week that you loved? So we start off with acknowledgement. Um. And is there anything you want to air out? And kind of like a floss. It's like, okay, maybe you did this thing unintentionally. Um, and I know that you airing it out is for the growth of our relationship to deepen intimacy. 
And then what does support look like for me this week? Maybe one of you has a crazy week. Maybe um, you're entering into your luteal phase in your menstrual cycle and you need extra support or whatever. What does support look like for me this week? Um, yeah, and those are the three questions. And so we check in every week. So we know nothing builds up. Mm-hmm. We start off with acknowledgement and we also know how to best support the other person going into the next week. And just opening that space for it too. It's fun. We're on a date, but also we have um, that structure in place for like airing stuff out, making sure we have that communication built into it. So it's a great combination of novelty and um, opening the space for us to have a good communicative talk on what happened that week and what we're looking to get into. Yeah. And I think that um, something that I felt with you that's been different than all my other relationships is... um, in closer um is is like this safety and bringing things up and knowing that like I can communicate something and it doesn't have to feel like a, a huge thing you know like it doesn't have to feel so heavy and um yeah I thought that that was like that's given me a lot of freedom to express things to you that maybe I would have felt like we're off or also giving you the benefit of the doubt of like, I can bring this up and, you know, Spencer's reaction or if he's willing to grow or like learn from this thing or, or meet me this halfway, then we keep moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And, and being able to, to talk about that and like level with each other every week is such a powerful addition to it. And it's a floss. It's honestly just a built in floss. And, um, can you share what your, one of your favorite date nights was? That we did together. Ooh. I liked when we went around the Christmas lights this uh, this winter. And we just had this like little park in Marina Del Rey that we were around. And there was no one really there. And we just kind of walked around and had a nice time with it. Um, yeah, simple date night. I love the rock climbing one where we got up to Sender 1 and um, went to Sage and had a nice cauliflower Sage meal. vegan bistro. Um, we had some really good ones, like traveling, of course, yeah. but, uh, that, that's easy. Yeah. No, I like those too. And the thing with date nights is like, uh, regardless of who's planning it, you can do ones where it's like, it costs money or you could do like a night hike. Beach walk. Yeah. And something else that we do that I think is also like nice on date nights when you carve out that time for sensual intimacy at the end and something that I felt like made us comfortable with each other intimately is like exploring different things like Tantra and like where the, the goal isn't the orgasm and where you can just like tell your partner how you like to be touched or like sitting with them. Maybe you're like declothed, but you're just like, like eye gazing or, or, or talking. And, and it's like this kind of like, yeah, taking the pressure off of like this peak experience around sensuality, which I feel like has made us like overall more intimate in the small moments throughout the day as well yeah yeah like one time we just uh learned how to massage each other for date night yeah well like yeah and by massage we even mean just like a standard like how a masseuse does it like we watched a youtube (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) we watched a youtube video on like and uh on how professional masseuse do it we learned this word effluage effluage where it's like you reset the back and you do the effluage but yeah so i feel like the, the date nights have been really powerful and I think another thing that we did when we moved into each, which also keeps like the contrast. And um, as we were kind of talking about earlier, when you move in with your partner, it can feel like your roommates after a while. If, you know, you're seeing each other pee in the bathroom, which I've told Spencer, I was like, please don't pee in front of me at the house. Not that I like don't mind it and I haven't, I've seen it done before, but I feel like it does keep some of that like romance when we're like, oh, like you know, like not kind of treating it like a frat house. Yeah, close the door when you're in the washroom. And, and Yeah, and kind of like keeping that mystery as like it's someone new that you're dating that you want to like, you know. Impress. Impress. And not that you have to have that, you know, sentiment all the time. But I feel like in the, those little moments, it kind of keeps the contrast as does the date night. But something else that we did that our friends Sarah and Scott recommended mm-hmm. was read this book called Fair Play. Oh, yeah, this one's a winner. Do you want to talk about what fair play is and our experience with it? So there's a certain number of things that have to happen when you're in a house. Someone has to do dishes. Someone has to take out the garbage. Someone has to buy groceries. Like it, it can be different people, but like there's these things have to get done. Um, when it's just a free for all of who does what, 
it's really tough to, oh, I, everyone thinks to do more. Like, I bet you, if you ask all the couples around the world um, what percent of the chores you do, it'll add up to like 180%. Like, both people think they're doing almost everything. Right. So, what this does is just divvies up the work in a very clear way, saying, what you do is you, you start with all the tasks that have to get done. You just list them out. There's like 30, list them out. Um, garbage and dishwasher and watering the plants and fixing like problems with the house and electricity payments and bill stuff like list all those out and then you put them as cards and what you do is then you sit down and you each take a card one at a time until you have an equalish amount and then at that point in time you you every single time, if you are the garbage taker outer um you take out the garbage every single time and if the garbage is full, it's your job. And it's really clear who does that. But likewise, you know that when the um, sink needs cleaning, that's what your partner does. So when you've broken it down like that, and there's the accountability piece to it, uh, you can really balance out the chores and nobody feels hard done by. There's no hard feelings with it. It's just it's not it's another thing that you have to talk about as a couple. Off the plate. And then you can just adjust it. But it's little tweaks. You're yeah, like, little tweaks of like, hey, like this one is your fair play. Like Spencer does the groceries. So I'm like, could you get these, these things instead? Or like, or don't wait till we're like absolutely out of zero food to like order the next round of groceries. So you can like offer that for that person's fair play as they can for you, for yours. Yeah, but it's, yeah, fair play is amazing. It's such a great way to really balance out who's doing what and making the house chores feel like such a non-problem. Yeah. And so I feel like that's been really great. And I think some of the other stuff, like now to kind of, we've talked about some of the easy, low-hanging fruits that we've done in our relationship, which we're really proud of. And we have a beautiful notion board that Spencer's, uh, you know, me being this emotional, visionary being and him being an, an organized systems and structure man. He made us a notion board. As one does. With like best selves and our bucket list and our space and things we still get to do as a couple. Um but, um, yeah, some of the other stuff that's been, uh, stuff that we've worked through. And, you know, I think I saw this quote once on a relationship Instagram. That's like, um, you know, like you're in a relationship with someone, you fight, you, uh, like it's messy, like it's chaotic. You're, you're confronted. And then it's like, these are the healthy relationships. Good luck. <laughs> and and I do believe that's true. I feel like, uh, especially with us, like each disagreement where it's like, you could be so easy to walk away and we like recommit, like, no, I'm figuring this out with you. I'm not going anywhere. I feel like that does deepen like that level of commitment and knowing like we have chosen each other and it's like, yeah, also we're married. Um, but it's like that recommitment each time there is like a disagreement or not seeing eye to eye of like, this sucks and I'm not feeling heard and you're not, or you're not feeling heard and we're going to work through this and we're still going to stay. And that's been like so powerful and like while still being confronting, you know? Yeah. It just demonstrates that commitment that we have for each other. And, um, even when it's hard, even when it's frustrating, we can still make it happen. And well, yeah. And I think like, there was um, like a longer standing issue like last year that we worked through uh, in regards to <laughs> traffic laws and how Spencer drove my car in ways that I found like stressful. Um, and he didn't think, he didn't see why I was like, he didn't see why it was such a big deal. And then I was getting triggered because it kept happening. And I was like, is he listening to me? Um, and it was, it was like a point of contention for a few months when it was like a repeated thing. And I think like what we did to work through it is like, well, we started going to couples therapy and, and I do believe even in going couples therapy is just a way of keeping the channels clear. Yeah, it's a great Because it, they're basically like a mediator helping you make sure you hear your partner and not just trying to make like this is my point and my, like we are on the same team, like we're on the same side of the table. So I feel like he helped you understand. Well, do you want to say what he helped you understand <laughs> <laughs> in our situation? He just helped me connect like safety with, um, how you like safety being such a high priority for you. And that when things make you feel unsafe and they repeated, like it, it makes you lose trust. Yeah. And, 
I felt like finally like that getting through to you and your commitment to work on it, even though you weren't doing it, is what ended up, yeah, giving fire to our relationship and um, and deepening it on the other side of that too, um, of, of like that different layer. And I try to, when I have called one of my best friends, Sarah, who talks me through some of our relationship stuff, um, understand like why is Spencer still doing this or like... I told him this, like, why, why is this still happening? Like to continue to approach it with curiosity and not, not to feel personally attacked, but to like return with even more curiosity for you of like, where is this coming from? What happens when you do that? And like, and, and trying to pull back the layer to understand you more versus like trying to prove my point and vice versa. And so I think like part of our work, which we're not perfect at still, but we're getting better and we're committed to it every day is like slowing down the conversation Mm -hmm. and um really trying to hear what are what we're saying and why that is the way that that is where is that trigger coming from and not making it like um an attack on the other person's character but being like hey this is what i need to feel safe making it into a request is this something you're willing to do for me and then it's like not making it right or wrong or my way or your way, but it's like, hey, this is my my preference or this is my request. Are you willing to meet it? Right. And yeah, understanding that like, yeah, uh, are you open to hearing this right now or should we move? Like we we're, we can do interrupts as well when like if something's not getting across, if a point's not being made, um, I think we both recognize the power of an interrupt and just to reset your state so that we can then approach it with love and the type of attention we want. Yeah. Sometimes like I had a thing like last weekend where like a little trigger came up and like I found myself shutting down and like when I shut down, I feel like I just want to like run away and be on my own. And Spencer came um, or I came back inside the house because we live together. So it's not like I can do that. Like Spencer's home when I get home. And uh, he just like was like, let me like hold you, you know, Um, it's okay. Like, are you sad? And I was like, that's all. And he's like, okay, like, you know, what does it feel like to be sad? Like, which I also think was like progress from your end because I think that just acknowledging me and acknowledging my feelings and holding me and not trying to rationalize it or make it a solution or being, you know, how sometimes men can be like, what's the solution? Or like, just let's just skip to the end here. But like slowing it down, like, okay, that makes sense. You're like feeling sad. Like, how does that feel? Like, and you were just like stroking my hair and holding me and it's like, that immediately like helped me like from shutting down or like getting into like protection mode into like allowing me to soften long enough for us to actually, um, you know, work through that trigger, Mm -hmm. which was powerful. Yeah, no, it's important. Uh, And also just understand how each other, like how we both receive feedback and receive information when we're feeling in the given state. Yeah. Well, and then, one thing that we do, we'll talk touch on some of the stuff we did for our wedding on a ceremonial level of like preparing for it, and then one one thing we do with our quarterly offsites. Um, another big tip. Oh yeah, another big tip. But before we do that, I will say on the trigger thing and receiving feedback, we've had a few funny moments. What I do want to share um, is like once uh, last Valentine's Day. Actually, speaking of Valentine's Day, Spencer gave me a valentine card in the yeah. in the morning with stationery that i had bought like he like it was like i bought this pendleton stationery just to like have for like friends birthdays and stuff and then on valentine's day he hands me a letter written to me on pendleton stationery that i bought and you know the old meredith would have been passive aggressive or been kind of annoyed and i was like okay rather than just like resent him i'm gonna set him up for success so i I, I got the, he handed me the card and the cards are like thoughtfulness and it's important to me. And I know he is thoughtful, but sometimes guys just need a little direction. So I was like, Hey, I really appreciate you writing this. I noticed it's on my stationery. Um, it's really important to me that you go out and like pick a card that makes you think of me or, or, and, or like Valentine's day, just that extra effort that like you got it for, and it wasn't a last minute thing. This is the morning you have you know, the whole day ahead of you. 
uh, I'm not even going to look at this card. You can write it on the new card. And I handed it back to him. And it was a moment. Yeah. What, did, what was, what was going on in your head in that moment when I gave you that feedback? Well, I was like, wow, this is um, great boundary setting, but also like, okay, time to get a card. You know, you made it really clear what I need to do. So I think mean, I just wrote the same thing on in the other card. card. I knew it wasn't the gesture. Yeah. It was just the, the medium. Yeah. And then he wrote a great, or the same great poem but <laughs> same on, a one. on a different card, which Valentine's Day is coming up. So yeah, just to note. Forewarned. Um, and then another thing that you love that I incorporated or that like with feedback, um, before we get to the last two things, is um, when you were kind of being, like, dare I say, what we had talked to before, with each other before, like kind of projecting on me and my professional journey based on where you wanted to be on yours because we both are going through this, like, you know, exciting but nebulous, like, moment of, like, up-leveling our businesses. And I felt kind of like unseen by you in the stuff that I was doing in the different areas of my life because I felt like you were like this intense like soccer coach pushing me to do more and um it made me feel like even though I want to expand and and rise I like want to do so at my own pace and I want my husband to be like my cheerleader not like my soccer coach Mm -hmm. I've never played soccer but like um anyway so I told you that and then for our date night you want to say the one with the candles and like the stuff in the jar, like the way you were. Right. Yeah. So you were feeling unseen by me. And, um, I think just a couple things in life happened around then. So you were in a bit of a low and like, like, you know, a week low. So I was just like, I want to bring Meredith up today. So I know you, you were out for a while. So I bought you a bunch of candles and, um, I put on pieces of paper, all the different, things that I see in you, like all the different versions of Mary that I know you to be. So like there's like the performer, there's the coach, there's a visionary, there's the traveler, there's the storyteller. And I had like like 20. And what we did was we, um, I lit a candle for each one and I had them all laid out and like I had you to like draw one from the, the bowl and then light a candle and that would be like representing of it. Yeah. So I, I, I got to see all angles of you. And then I wrote a, um, I made a card uh, so that when you got in the door, it said, like, you're invited to the celebration of Mare. At uh, home. Yeah, at like home. a like a Broadway uh, pamphlet or what are those things called? Yeah, the, just, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's like, wow, I felt like seen and above and beyond. And I feel like those moments, uh, kind of going back to that relationship, Coach the end. She says some, or and I might butcher this, but she said like, for each, um, you know, it's not about couples who don't make it. It's not necessarily about the love not being there. It's that for the fractures that happened, there wasn't a repair, because so often we can just like ignore the fracture or swallow it or let it slide or whatever, and we never say what we never say and get clear on what we need to feel like that has been repaired, and so I feel like taking that and the flossing from from our few sessions with her um you know I feel like that um that candle example is a perfect example of a repair like I told you like this is a fracture and I am going to need a repair or like with the driving stuff like not only did we do couples therapy but I said that's part of the repair part of the repair is you going to your own coach for a few sessions and figuring out what um where this is coming from. So I feel like that's been another thing too, of like either of us saying like, this has been a fracture and here's what, a, here's a repair that would feel good for me. So it's not just calling the other person out, but then doing our, our own internal work and communication of like, this is what I need to now feel like this has been cleared. So we're not holding on to things from the past. I think that's a big one too, is both of us understanding when things feel cleared and when things feel like properly addressed. Yeah. And so the last two things we'll touch on. Um, well, another thing we do in the week, we do the weekly date nights. And then another thing that we do is we do quarterly offsites. Uh, just put it in company jargon. Um, but we'll do a quarterly, like once a quarter, so that for everyone doing math out there, that's every four, 90 days, four times a year. Um, we'll go into nature for a weekend and um, we will spend the first night. Um, like maybe doing a heart opener, um, but, but 
starting off like a little bit of time alone journaling on like what's come up what are my deepest fears about the relationship uh what's my ideal scene around the next version of our relationship and then after like 90 minutes or two hours we come back together and we share like what are our deepest fears or like things that have come up what are the things we're most proud of in our relationship and what is this ideal scene that I have how does that match the ideal scene that you have in which ways are they different and then we spend the rest of the night like talking about our relationship yeah so we, we kind of set the container and then allow us to both think on like within the container for us to think on like what's our vision for us what's working what's not what's a frustration like what's things that we're not talking about enough and just like really open that space to, to think deeply on each other and us as a couple and then um, coming together with all those then ideas and being able to watch us like share uh, so openly and so like thoughtfully on what we have, um, where we're at. Right. And yeah. And then the next day we do our integration of like, yeah, what we're going to take with us. It's a chill day. We're kind of taking it easy. This is yoga and stretching and nature. Right. Which is one of the few times Spencer will do yoga. Just kidding. He supports me in all that I do, but he doesn't love it like I do. But he loves me and does it because of that. Um, but yeah, so he'll do an integration day. We'll do an integration day where it's like, okay, we had those musings last night. A lot was said. Like, how are we actually going to uh, implement this into our lives? And so, yeah. And so we do that the next day and then kind of do that every quarter. And I think some really great things have come from that. Definitely more clarity around the safety and freedom, especially when it comes to the rules of the road. And also this idea of holding each other to each other, mm -hmm. which was that, which came from our one in Topanga, which is like this idea of holding each other um, to... Um, the version of each other that we know that we want to be. The version of each other that we know that we wanted to be, but doing so in a loving way, like kind of gently reminding, being like, I love you and I know you're going through this emotion or this experience and I'm still holding you at your best even when you're feeling at your worst mm -hmm. and and just being there to gently hold the mirror. So that's been really powerful. Um, yeah, just other fun things that, that I'll just throw in and then we can talk about our, our kind of capstone just of like, yeah, what we did um, before the wedding and, and wrap it up. But um, so other things that we do that I love is each of us will take solo trips um, to kind of in our own self-inquiry each year alone. So we come back and we're constantly like learning new things about ourselves. Like I went to Hoffman Process. You, then you went to a Hoffman Process. You're in Still Life's program now. Um, I have my own coach. I think it's like as couples, not just going to couples therapy, but also doing your own work mm. and having your own experience and having your own friends. And, and then some things we curate together, we're like, we really want to get to know these people. And so we'll have intentional, not just dinners with other couples or invite other couples that inspire us or we want to get to know to game night, but we'll also like invite individual people over, um, that we want to get to know. And Spencer and I like love kind of as a couple, like growing in deep, different friendships together yeah exactly and having our own friends but also like shared friends and shared experiences and just having our own lives yeah put it simply uh yeah and so one of the last things that we'll touch on before we get into the medi um let's talk about monthly routine well okay so we have a um one of our well isn't that the same as quarterly and weekly Right, but the monthly one we do the picture. We have oh yeah, our, yeah. oh yeah, draw the, or yeah, so you can you can say the picture thing. So we have a little coloring book of just like blank pages and crayons, and once a month we we draw with crayons like stick figures, like elementary school style. Um, we draw our favorite memory from the month. Yeah. So that'll be like you know obviously our wedding was in there, our Burning Man or like trip to you know Columbia Christmas and stuff, but just like things that happen, you know. Uh, we have our like favorite our scene from the month. And then we have, since the month we met, like scenes ba that we've dra drawn with Crayola crayons. Yeah, we, so we got a lot now. But uh, yeah, we add to it once a month. And we um, and we talk about it and we both sign it and we both co-create co that. <laughs> yeah. So there's the treasured memories in that book. Treasured memories. Um, and then, yeah, the last thing we'll touch on is like, because I feel like this is indicative of all the kind of experiences we like to lead together is our wedding. Uh, we led a fe or we <laughs> led a festival wedding. We created a festival wedding together. For you guys who don't know, I have a whole episode on like the details of what we did with my um, my old co-host Eileen. We had a festival wedding uh, near a pistachio farm, space cowboy theme Friday night, Burning Man style. People brought gifting. We crushed it. It was gluten free vegan. We had our friends DJ. We had like poolside DJ sets. 
Um, we yeah, had, you had, you had to be there. Yeah, you had to be there. We had connection moments. But so, something that Spencer and I did before that, which I really loved, is like going into the wedding. And this is just an example of like going into any like situation of high emotion with a, a partner. Is before the wedding, we had our own intimate ceremony at our house. Um, and I'm not saying like a wedding ceremony, but we had we had three other of those. But we had a ceremony where we both talked about what is our deepest fear going into the wedding. Like, for instance, one of mine was like, I fear that we're not actually going to get time together at the wedding, that we'll both be pulled in many directions. Or I fear that I'll be talking, cornered, talking to like a rogue person and I won't get to drop in with my actual friends together. Like, and and then after we shared our deepest fears, we shared like, how can I support you in ameliorating that fear or assuaging that fear, as we're saying from our SAT vocab words. But, um, um, and then like, what can we already accept? Like maybe there was a decision that was made, maybe their guests were already invited. What can we accept and release, like control over? That's already, it is what it is. And then what is our best case scenario for the wedding? And what is the feeling that we want to have in that best case scenario? And how can we just stay connected to that feeling and release the, the, the vision of what that best case scenario is and just stay connected to that feeling? So even if something does go awry, we're centered in that feeling. Like when, when I thought it was going to be a fully gluten-free wedding because I'm a celiac and found out that they put real bread out there. And I was like, I mean, it like sucked because I am like super, super allergic. Um, and as a bride, you wanted to feel like it like everyone was getting to eat like you for the weekend, but I was like, I'm not going to like let this throw, like throw a wrench in like th that feeling that I'm connected to with Spencer. So we got really clear on that before the wedding. So we knew how to like support each other mm -hmm. during the wedding. And we also were like, we're here to like create this memory together. Which ties into ceremon ceremonialize everything as well. Yeah. Which ties into ceremonializing everything. So Spencer is, is, is so good. <laughs> um, good job. Um, we ceremonialize everything and, uh, not to sound like a Venice cliche, but I do think it's like coming with what we were saying in this episode of like slowing down the conversation, really listening to each other with curiosity. Um, and to ceremonialize, it's like, what fear can I release or expectation can I release? Um, what is, yeah, what is my ideal hope or manifestation for this? And what is yours and what's the best thing that could happen and how can we like lean into that right now and in the gratitude of what already is mm -hmm. and kind of coming back to that feeling, coming back to that gratitude. And we've done that for a wedding. We've done that for my birthday. We've done that for your birthday. We've done that for <laughs> the, the full moon ceremonies that we've hosted for our friends. Uh, we've done that before or after like one of us did something big for the first time, like my stand up. Uh, well, the first time I performed stand up, and it's just like these little connective moments we have to like help each other process things along the way, mm -hmm. which I feel like is really powerful. It's a great, great habit. So, should we wrap up all the actionable things that people can do to, to yeah, keep their relationship hot? Yeah, and the one other thing that uh, I'll say, um, and maybe we'll just end with like a one minute little centering many moment. But the one last thing I'll say that's really helped me a lot in my relationship with you and with other people is, um, and, and it came out because of you, but my old, uh, coach Victoria song, who's also amazing. Uh, when I was having a communication kerfuffle with you in our early days, she gave me this framework called alpha to help me, um, center my conversation with you, which now I love sharing to everybody. So shout out to Victoria. Um, so it starts with A, which is acknowledgement. So like firstly acknowledging the other person, like Spencer, I know that you love doing X, Y, Z so much for us. And I really appreciate that. The L is the long-term vision. I see us both being able to like uh, add to this in a way that feels like energizing for the other. Then the P is the problem. But when you address the problem, not accusing the other person, keeping it factual, like when this happened, this is how I felt. So you're not, you're removing um, and the person's like character from being attacked. So like I noticed that when you did this, it brought this up for me. It brought like these feelings of not enoughness up for me. And then the H is happiness. What does happiness look like for both of us in this situation? Like, um, I would love if like we could both like 
move forward or feel like this when we talk to each other in this way. And then the last A is the ask, getting clear on the ask. And that comes back to that request. What is my ask of you? How can we both work forward in a collaborative way? And I feel like framing our, our requests of each other like that has also been like super fundamental. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And the last other thing before we wrap up too that I say that I love is that we keep kind of like the playfulness alive, not taking ourselves like too seriously, like waking up and dancing together sometimes. And then we have an inner child shrine in our cuddle den. We have a cuddle den with like fuzzy blankets and a disco ball. And we put photos of our inner child there. And so it's like whenever we like start our inner day, we like see those photos of our younger selves and like, let's like stay like playful for that. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Um, every night before we go to bed, we say one thing we love about each other. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, we say one thing that we love about each other from that well, day, so we never go to bed mad. So it's like even if, or even if I am like a little pissed, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, I love that you went to Muay Thai today and like learned more about martial arts. Or I love that you could have been more annoying when you did this. <laughs> for some, yeah. for mad, but. but it just forces us to kind of break that whatever and also to end with acknowledgement oh and then the last thing that we also do is we each have one line a day journals where we write like Mm -hmm. all the good things that happened that day and then we share them with the other person because they're five-year journals we can see like what we did the year before and the year before that so it's a nice like reflection moment at the end of the day together as well yeah so if you're looking to add some fun habits and systems into your relationship remember weekly date night weekly date night asking the three questions um, of, quarterly offsites. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. During during date night, asking the three questions of what um, what did I do that you love this week? Is there anything you want to air out? What does support look like for me this week? Quarterly offsites. Quarterly offsites, and then um, ending or er, ending the night with um, acknowledgement and gratitude. Flossing. Flossing when things come up. Uh, dividing the the chores so you can remain. Sure. Yeah, fair play. Remain in contrast. Um, and I think d- helping, it, taking time to do extra wor- work and exploration of yourself so you can bring that new side of you to the relationship or that that uh, clear side of you to the relationship. Mm-hmm. So take notes. Take notes. Okay, everybody. Um, this was really powerful. We'll just uh, close our eyes. I know we d- ended with the journaling first. We'll just end with the meditation and then we'll close out. But closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in. Exhaling it out. And as you take deeper breaths, bringing your awareness to your heart space. And in your heart space, feeling the energy of whatever relationship you want to focus on today. Maybe it's a partnership, a friendship. And just seeing the other person's face as if you're like feeling it, seeing it, feeling their energy pulse in your heart space. Seeing them as their highest and best self. And as you see them as their highest and best self, feeling that energy absorb into you, elevating you, becoming your highest and best self. And as you feel it absorbing into you, becoming your highest and best self, seeing them benefit from that, going into their highest and best self even more, feeling this beautiful expansion between both of you with so much compassion, with so much love, with so much gratitude, and then feeling that ripple out beyond both of you touching the other people in your life, touching the other people in their life, touching the other people in their life, until you feel it surrounding the world. Two humans, perfectly imperfect, together, breathing, co-creating in this moment. Holding that vision as you take a deep breath in and exhaling it out. Opening your eyes, coming back into the space. Well, thank you, baby. I love you. And happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I want to acknowledge you for coming on to this podcast and being here with me on your Friday night um, and waiting while I did my other podcast before this so patiently so you could be on here and sharing what we do in our relationship to make it so special. Of course, baby. I love you. I'm here for it. I love you. I'm here for it. Spencer, by the way, has been to every single more of that event of mine since he's been here every morning. On Mondays, coming to our best morning ever, doing our yoga, even though yoga isn't his favorite. He's like my number one cheerleader. 
always seeing the best in me, even even as we work through some of our communication things. And I feel very lucky that I get to share this life with you and share our story with everyone. Of course, number one fan. Number one baby. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next week for more powerful, powerful stuff. stuff.